In this video, we're going to take a look at connecting to NFS-based storage. So we can add NFS-based data stores, and we don't need to format them using the VMFS file system. And if you take a look, I'm currently connected to one of my hosts, and I'm in its configuration storage area looking at the data stores. And I can see that my local data stores are actually formatted using VMFS 5. On my NFS01 data store, we can see that it's actually mounted from a remote server and is using the NFS. Well, it says it's an NFS type. What type of file system is on the remote end is going to depend on what operating system is running there locally. In this case, it's actually using something called OpenFiler that you can use to create network attached storage services from whatever local storage you have available. So I've already got that NFS data store mounted, but I'm going to add another one, which is going to come from a Windows file server using the services for NFS installed on Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Storage. And in this case, rather than choosing a disk or LUN type storage, which we are going to need to format as VMFS, I'm just going to pick Network File System and click Next. Provide the details. Now, it can be tricky because potentially this network interface is going to be something that's available to the ESXi server, but is not necessarily available to vCenter. So, for example, if I drop out to a command prompt on my vCenter server, it's not necessarily going to be able to ping that address if it's a private little network that's designed primarily for servicing the ESXi hosts. So either I can add my vCenter to that network somehow, or it may be useful to go onto the service console and use the VMK ping utility to do a ping using the various VM kernel interfaces that exist. So it can be a little tricky to set up NFS in that way when you do have many different interfaces available. It's gonna be important that the routing directs our connectivity here through the right path. When we set up iSCSI, we have to choose which adapters are going to be used, but we don't have that when we're using NFS. So this can be a little bit tricky to set up. I'm going to provide the path, which in this case is NFS-02, and this actually is case sensitive and needs to match what's set up on the server. And then I'm going to provide a local data store name. And that doesn't really matter all that much. But if we're using a clustered set of servers or just servers that are all going to have access to this NFS share, then we're probably going to want to name them in a similar way just for consistency. And especially if we're actually going to host virtual machines off of these rather than just using NFS storage for templates or ISOs or something along those lines. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now you'll notice it's not asking me for a username and password or any security information to go to connect to that NFS share it's always going to access it as root. Now that can be a little bit difficult because typically NFS is going to block user ID zero, which is what's used for root. On a traditional Unix style system, if you're looking at your Etsy configurations, you'll see there's typically a root squash option that's the default. So typically you're gonna to have to use no root squash, or for example, in Windows, there's a little checkbox that says allow root access. So you're gonna to need to make sure that that's done. And so we don't really have a huge amount of functionality for controlling who's able to access these NFS data stores and so on. So it's going to be important to at least use IP address restrictions. And we may want to isolate this network in some way and be very careful about how we're going to host production virtual machines there, because potentially someone might even be able to access those files without going through VMware at all. When we're on a VMFS data store, well, they could potentially use the data store browser or something, but there's a little bit of an extra layer of control there. My data store is mounted. I could go browse the data store. In this case, there's nothing on it, but I could start maybe using storage vMotion to put some virtual machines there, or I could create some new virtual machines and place them there, or maybe I'm just going to use this to store templates for virtual machines or ISO images for installations. And if I'm only using that temporarily, maybe to upload a tool or something to the servers or to upload a virtual machine to a server temporarily and then copy it off, once you're done, you can just unmount it quite easily. So long as there's no virtual machines that you're actively using from that data store anyway. And also, if you're in a DRS or HA cluster, that data store might have been selected as a heartbeat data store, and that can prevent you from removing it as well. But as you can see, it's reasonably straightforward to add or remove NFS storage, but you are going to have to be very, very careful that your environment, if it becomes dependent on those NFS data stores, that we're going to have those protected and ensure that we've got NIC teaming and so on on the various network interfaces that we're going to use to connect to that storage to improve performance. Now, iSCSI requires a special configuration for doing multiple NICs with iSCSI, but NFS doesn't. So it can use techniques like NIC teaming and so on, whereas iSCSI can't. So refer to the iSCSI videos and some of the other videos for more details on how to make a highly available and also performant infrastructure if you're going to be using NFS for production data stores which is totally okay, and it can actually give excellent performance 
And some vendors such as NetApp are actually pushing NFS as their preferred solution because it allows them to use their own file system structures to do things like deduplication and cloning and snapshots and so on without having to worry about how VMFS is going to interpret that or without having to worry about how it's going to coordinate those sorts of things with VMFS. The NFS protocols are very simple, and that allows the vendors to provide their own value in the file system rather than just presenting a raw SCSI device. So this can be a very effective way of handling virtual machine storage, and Microsoft's Hyper-V 3.0 is also going in much the same direction and providing the capability of using Windows file shares as storage, although we cannot do that here, at least not yet, but maybe in a future edition of VMware. 